What is up, everybody? Welcome back. I've got some exciting news to share with you guys today in the world of Adobe Lightroom. There are updates that are going to be issuing today across the entire suite of Lightroom applications, including Lightroom Classic, Lightroom CC, the website, lightroom.adobe.com, and Lightroom Mobile, which includes all platforms, Android, iOS, Chrome OS, did I leave anything out? Anyway, there's some cool stuff. Let's get started. First up, we now have preset and profile syncing. And this is pretty cool because not only does it include presets and profiles that ship with Lightroom, obviously, but it also includes includes presets that you make yourself or that you buy from third parties. And it allows you to access them not only on the desktop, but also on mobile applications. And this is very useful. Now, in order to get this going, if you have presets that you've built or third party presets, if you're like me and you use Lightroom Classic a lot, you've got to import them into Lightroom CC first, and then they will start syncing. So to do this, you're going to go into Lightroom CC and under the file menu, you're going to import your presets, locate them in the finder, and then they will start syncing across devices. This is pretty awesome because now you can access them on on mobile. And so if you go over to the mobile version of Lightroom, basically in the edit panel, if you go all the way to the bottom, you will now see your presets. And there they are, voila. And of course, this goes both ways. You can now create presets in the mobile version of Lightroom and they will sync up to the desktop. And I think this is a really powerful feature that Adobe has given us. One thing I tend to do a lot is small things that become very repetitive, like emulating a film curve or something like that. I don't want to recreate every time. So I have a lot of presets that are kind of utility presets that just do some color toning or some curves adjustments. And then I can take it further from there, but they go ahead and they get it set up for me. This is a great way to work. And now that you can sync these with mobile, it's a great way to do it on the go. Also, if you go over to lightroom.adobe.com, this is the browser version of Lightroom that you use for sharing images. They have now added enhanced sharing options for albums that you've created. And what you want to do is you want to click on the shared icon, and then you can control download permissions, show metadata, and location data on a map. This is very useful if you're using this to work with clients. Now let's talk about Lightroom Mobile. Now I did mention that we have the ability to create presets in Lightroom Mobile that will sync to the desktop, but there's some other new features that are pretty cool too. First up, we now have a healing brush. So now you can perform healing adjustments within the mobile application. We also have the ability to remove chromatic aberrations. Now, at the moment, this is only available in the iOS version. I imagine it will be coming to Android soon. And speaking of things that are coming soon, let's talk about technology previews. Now, if you're not familiar with what technology previews are, if you go into the preferences in the mobile application, you can turn these on. And these are basically kind of these beta previews of things that will be coming that are being enhanced and worked on. You can turn them on or off if they're not working for you. But we've got two really cool ones. In Lightroom Mobile. The first one is guided tutorials. So if you're not familiar with Lightroom, this is a great way to get a guided tutorial around the software interface and how you can best use this. And we also now have a long exposure emulation too, which is kind of cool. And there have been other apps that have done this before, but this is for capturing images on a mobile device like your phone. And long exposure is something that just the nature of the design is hard to do. So you have to emulate it with a series of exposures. What's cool about this is it allows you to do a long exposure emulation without a tripod, which is actually kind of interesting and I'll be working through some of these in the next few weeks and we'll test them out and see if they're the real deal or not but this one does look promising. If you're on the Android version of the device you can take advantage of the new HDR support that's in there as well so if you're capturing images from a cell phone in a really high contrast area you can play with the high dynamic range and get shadows and highlights to even out and things like that so that looks very promising as well. Adobe has also given us the ability to batch copy and paste settings in Lightroom CC. Now this is something that we've had for a while now in Lightroom Classic, and they finally moved this over to the CC version as well. So if this is the version that you're using, this allows you to make edits to one image. And then if you use, let's say you have a group of similar images, you can just copy and paste those settings across an entire group of images. So to do this, what you want to do after you've edited an image is you want to select the image in one of the view modes. You're going to go up under the photo menu at the top of the screen, and this gives you two options. You can copy all the settings, or you can select individual settings that you want to copy and paste. Then what you're going to do is hold down the shift key and select all the images that that you want these settings applied to. Go back up under the photo menu and then you can paste them across. Everything syncs up. It finally works and it is awesome. And finally, let's talk about new features in Lightroom Classic. Now, this is the version of Lightroom that I use the most. It's the one I'm the most familiar with and I also still feel like it's the most powerful of all of the options that you've got. And so there have been some new additions to this as well to improve productivity. If you're like me, over the years, you've accumulated a lot of Lightroom presets and they built up and I've organized those into folders and whatnot, but I don't use all of them all the time. 
time. And when you open that folder and it's just a mess, now you have the ability to hide and show Lightroom presets. So you can turn on stuff off that you're not using. And basically you're just gonna click on the little drop down menu and a management window comes up. You're able to select what you want to be visible or invisible. And then you can close that window. Now they're still there. You're just not gonna see them. So they're not in your way. If you need access to them, you can go turn them back on. So it's a very helpful feature in terms of productivity. Also added is enhanced search features. Everything is now faster. Even I've found when I'm searching across my entire collection, everything just pops right up. There's actually a really nice performance upgrade there. And we now also have the ability to apply color labels to folders, much like you can in the Finder. This is very useful if you want to mark a folder of images that you want to come back to later to finish up or something that needs review. Anyway, this is all designed to make you more productive. And then finally is probably my favorite feature that they've added into Lightroom Classic. And this is small, but it's a big time saver. If you work with HDR stacks or panorama stacks, I do a lot of panoramas, especially when I do drone shots. And now we have the ability for auto stacking. This is very cool because now we can import images and based on capture time, we can apply auto stack. Or when you're applying the HDR or panoramic stitch, there is a little tick box that says auto stack images. And when it's done, it's going to auto stack these. So you don't just have random images floating around and you don't really remember they're part of a panorama. This will make it really clear. So these updates you will be able to download and install starting today. And I'm pretty excited. And I want to talk about Adobe for a second because obviously the highlight of this round of updates has to do with cloud application. And I think that is one of the strong suits that Adobe has with Lightroom in this direction they're going. And I think with this release, we're starting to see a little bit of a roadmap. And I want to explain that. If you remember back to last year when things got a little bit confusing for Lightroom users, when all of a sudden we have now the Creative Cloud version, then there's Lightroom Classic and what is the difference between the two and maybe I should be using CC so you open up CC and it is missing tools that you're used to using and so okay I'm going to work in classic and it became very confusing and I think a lot of people got a little upset with Adobe for that but I think we're starting to see where Adobe is going with this and I think it's actually kind of interesting and one of the things that you have to understand when it comes to software development is a software company like the ideas are the easiest part and we're going to have a cloud and you'll be able to sync your images and you'll be able to pull them up on your phone or over here or on the desktop or, you know, we're leveraging all these technologies. Well, not only do you have software to deal with, but you also have hardware to deal with. You probably have interim software when all these things are talking to each other to get it to work correctly. And if you just fire it all off and then throw out something that doesn't work, you're in for big trouble. And so Adobe traditionally, I think, has been somewhat cautious of what they will release and when they will do it. And if you think back to when, you remember when Lightroom was just one application and it worked on the desktop. And the first time they introduced Lightroom Mobile, and I remember installing it on my phone and it was just kind of like, okay, I can edit images on my phone, but it wasn't any better than some of the other applications that were out there. But what happened is over the next couple months, next couple years, is that Lightroom Mobile got better. And now it's a pretty interesting app to use, particularly when you can sync it to the desktop. So I think a lot of these cloud-based things that we're seeing with Adobe are starting to indicate a roadmap of where they're going. I think it's going to be really interesting to leverage technologies such as browser abilities to edit. If you go to lightroom.adobe.com, that's probably the least used from people that I talk to. Um, it's a really good place if you're sharing images with a client or with your family or something and you want to give people the ability to download or preview or comment or what have you. It works great for that. But most people don't know that you can actually open the editor in there and you can do edit adjustments to an image. So it's really nice if you're delivering something on the fly or I could see a lot of usefulness there. And I think it's interesting because browser technologies are becoming good enough to where you can actually do some of these things in a browser. But they are taking advantage of all the points that you might be interacting with your image catalogs. This includes mobile, includes desktop, it includes the browser. If you're out of town and you don't have access to your images at home and you have them all synced up in the cloud, you can just use the browser version if you want to do something really quickly to send somebody. So I think this is really interesting and I think it's really interesting to see um, where Adobe are going with this because it's, I think the whole cloud element of this is starting to mature in a really interesting way. I would love to know what you guys think. Please leave me a comment below. I'm going to warn you now, we've got some pretty cool stuff coming up this week. I've got about three or four things that I have planned that we're going to be doing with and and I'm going to be doing some traveling for this. I'm leaving tomorrow. I've got a pack today. So tune in tomorrow because we're going to have some really awesome videos, especially if you're into big darkroom printing techniques and things. I don't want to spoil it all. Just show back up tomorrow and I'll take you on a little trip. So until the next video, I'll see you guys then. Later. Later.